Hey Summoners, how's it going? This recent patch has gone on for long enough, and I'm sure that many of you are looking forward to seeing some well-needed adjustments. It's been a while since we did one of these, but it's a new year, a new season, and another set of upcoming changes. Welcome to our channel, my name is Nathan Ng, and I'll be your host running through the upcoming changes for patch 13.1. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future videos like this, and let's get started. To begin, let's talk about some system changes. We have a couple of buffs coming up for a few items that have been lagging behind in terms of performance. First, Axiom Mark is going to have his Lethality buffed from 10 to 18. I've seen a lot of players mention that they feel like Lethality in general isn't as relevant as before. It's definitely up for debate, but especially in a game where both teams are stacked with heavy front lines, it can at least feel like it's not relevant. With a small buff to Lethality, players who build Axiom Arc early and start snowballing should be able to push their leads a bit harder. Next up, Horizon focuses up for a buff to its AP. It's a pretty solid buff and I wouldn't ignore it. Not only is it a stronger power spike, it'll also feel a lot more relevant in players' inventories come the late game. Another item up for a buff is Rite of Ages. Its health will be increased followed up by a bug fix, quality of life adjustments, and bonus movement speed effects raised. It'll also be easier to activate the movement speed effect as the amount of resources from Eternity required to activate it will be lowered as well. Alongside the buffs to Horizon Focus, we might see the mid lane or even the top lane meta change as a result of the next patch. Finally, Winter's Approach is also receiving a buff. Its cost will be reduced while its health will be increased slightly. Tanks who choose to build this item should benefit a bit and overall, I expect to see even more durability across the Summoner's Rift following this change. Up next we have the nerf for the Legend Tenacity Rune. It's been in the game for quite some time and this nerf was arguably long overdue. The amount of tenacity gained will be reduced per Legend stack, making it a much less effective replacement to Mercury Treads. You'll likely need to stack on Unflinching to fill a similar level of tenacity moving forward. Moving on, we have system adjustments. Jack showed the protein will receive some changes as it's a dominant part of the preseason meta. First, its cost will be increased slightly. Also, the bonus resists from its passive will now scale with bonus resists rather than total, making it more effective on champions actually dedicated to building other tank items alongside it. The drain damage will be increased and feature a strong max HP ratio, but you'll no longer drain from monsters or minions with it. Alongside with those changes to Winter's Approach I mentioned earlier, I think the top lane meta will continue shifting in favor of tanks moving forward. We'll make sure to keep you all updated. So, keep an eye out on our channel for our upcoming tier list as well as a list of finalized changes for next patch. Finally, Seraph's Embrace will see its cost increase significantly. In return, however, its AP will be increased, will include a 10 ability haste from the start, and will grant an increased mana to AP ratio and have its passive effect change. Rather than healing from the mana spent, it will now grant a lifeline passive, granting a 250 plus 20% current mana shield when low. That covers the system changes, but before we move on, let me ask you a question of the day. Are there any other items or system changes that you want to see Riot making moving forward? I'm curious how Jax will perform after these adjustments and feel like it'll need another nerf for the following patch as it might be too strong on tanks. Let me know your answers in the comments below and let's continue the video by heading into champion balance. Beginning with the top lane, we have a bloody patch coming up for some popular top laners. Aatrox is the first on the list and he'll face some pretty hefty nerfs moving forward. His passive damage will be reduced, followed by nerfs to his ease healing during his ultimate and bonus movement speed from his hit ultimate. This is a pretty big hit at all stages of the game and also to his team fighting impact as he'll be less mobile and less durable than before. Dr. Mundo is also receiving some nerfs. His base HP, armor growth, and ease bonus AD scaling will be reduced in the next patch. His ease bonus AD will lose 0.5% max HP scaling, which will cut down on his damage output noticeably at all points of the game. As an answer to most top laners, Fiora has proven to be a bit too powerful and she's also facing some nerfs. Her passive and Q's AD ratio will be reduced slightly. I'm sure she'll still do well after these smaller nerfs. However, they should slightly tone down how dominant she becomes once ahead. Kasate is also receiving a nerf next patch. His base movement speed, passive damage, W minimum damage, and W maximum damage will be all lowered next patch. These are moderate nerfs and you'll definitely feel them next patch. He's currently a power pick in solo queue, already banned in 20% of his games in high elo. I doubt that these nerfs will knock him down as a prominent pick in the current meta, but they'll certainly reduce his effectiveness and open up the top lane to some other champions. Mordekaiser was initially scheduled to receive a nerf, but if you're looking forward to seeing that, I have some unfortunate news for you. They've been pulled from the patch, but it's also quite likely that we'll see them return in a future one, so be on the lookout for those. We do have some buffs coming out in the top lane as well. Like I said, this is a huge patch for the top lane and the meta is definitely going to be shifting heavily. First, Jace will see his base AD increased as well as Meliform's W and Q damage raised. This will reward players who are willing to jump in for more aggressive trades, but also significantly increase his poke damage. Sion is also set to receive a pretty big buff. His base HP will be increased by 40 and his Q's maximum damage is also going to go up. That base HP buff is a pretty big one and he'll definitely feel a lot more competent in the early game as he'll be harder to gank, dive, or even scrap with. That covers the top lane changes so let's head into the jungle next. Starting off jungle changes we have one for Ravis. 
His base AD, base HP, and W armor will be reduced. In regards to the W armor, the base bonus will be reduced by 15, while the percentage scaling will be lowered at lower ranks. Hitting Rammus's armor will also reduce his damage output, adding on to the AD nerf. He's going to be moderately less durable early on, but scale to eventually become just about as tanky as he currently is. However, a small AD nerf will make him a little bit less of a threat in fights and also hurt his jungle clear speed. AD Shaco is going to get buffs next patch. His Q's mana cost will be reduced, while the backstab crit damage and ease AD ratio will be increased. It's going to be a slight increase to his early game, but if he manages to successfully pull ahead, he'll hit much harder in the mid game and he'll be able to snowball harder than before. Yet another reason to be scared of him. He's going to be a lot more threatening if he pulls ahead, so make sure you play safe and avoid falling victim to one of his ganks early. That's it for the jungle, so let's talk about the mid lane changes next. We have two buffs coming in the mid lane. The first is for Lysandra. Her HP per level will be increased slightly, and we'll also see some buffs to her Q's slow and W's cooldown. The Q's slow is a nice little touch, but her W's cooldown is going to receive a flat 2 second reduction. That is huge, and once she gets that ability haste in her build, she's going to be a huge team fight presence who brings an immense amount of crowd control. From where she currently stands, I honestly wouldn't be surprised if her win rate goes up by 2% or more next patch. Team play feels much more important than before, and the significance of a buff to her utility can't be underestimated. Finally, we have some buffs for Twisted Fate. His Q's cooldown will be reduced, while his W's blue and red card AP ratios are going to also be raised. Since most players opt to use his gold cards later on into the game, that buff to his W is going to be the most impactful. However, when you're making a rush play or make a mistake, you might feel that you're accidentally being a good player making use of these buffs. But seriously though, that extra burst damage that you get from the blue card might be what you just need when you're in a last showdown with an enemy or just simply trying to land the finishing blow. Also the red card could be good for pushing. That's it for the mid lane changes so we'll wrap up with the bottom lane. Zeri is first and she's set to receive some more nerfs. Her AD growth as well as her Q's damage are both receiving a nerf. This isn't a big deal at level 1, but this set of nerfs will begin to take effect as you get deeper into your games. Fun fact, I think Zeri only received nerfs since patch 12.12. .12. If you're a Zeri main, the good news is that this one isn't really that bad. Next up is a buff for Zaya. Her base attack speed and attack speed ratio will both be increased. It's a straightforward buff that will make her stronger at all points of the game. She's currently sitting at a 49% win rate in high elo, and with this buff, I'm sure she'll easily be pushed into the 50% range. Especially since Rakan is performing pretty decently, we might see the duo a lot more often in the bot lane. The final change that we have coming up is a nerf to Yumi. Her Q's damage is going to be reduced significantly. It'll go down by 10 per ability level, meaning that it'll deal 50 less damage at max rank. This is for both the regular and empowered version of the spell. Although Yumi will continue to provide an immense amount of utility, some excess strength is going to be taken away in the form of her poke damage. With those changes covered, we'll conclude a patch 13.1 upcoming changes. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and like always, feel free to share your thoughts with us in the comments below. Thank you all so much for watching, good luck in Season 13 everybody, Happy New Year, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.